Well, if everyone's okay, why don't we get started? We may have a few folks join us, uh, but that's okay. We'll uh, kick the program off and uh, be respectful of everybody's time this morning. So thanks for joining us for another Chamber Tuesday talk, uh, today focused on marketing. And uh, we're really excited to have Lori Mee from Spectrum Reach and Chris Anderson from Snowcrest Digital and the Resource Center joining us. A uh, couple quick housekeeping items, as we all know, after a couple of years of Zoom, uh, and we continue to figure that out. Um, we, we have this uh, series of Tuesday talks that we do digitally, um, and we're uh, using Zoom. So please keep your microphones muted. We're just in a regular meeting setting. So if you could keep those muted throughout the presentation, you can send... Um, questions through the chat if you think of them during the presentations and then we will start to go through those when we get to the end if there are any submitted questions otherwise we'll just open the floor up at that time as well and you're certainly welcome to you know jump in and ask a question of our presenters um we will be sharing screens and everything so uh you know please let us know if if uh, you're not seeing you know, the presentations as we switch, but uh, we, we should be good there. And um, I'll try to remind you, you know, through the presentations to uh, send those questions via the chat as well. Uh, today's discussion, we do have a couple sponsors we want to recognize off the top here. Uh, Forcon, our local forestry consulting firm, if you are aware of them, we thank Forcon. Labella Associates, uh, design professionals, uh, with uh, your structure plans and ideas to bring you uh, design results. So thank you, Labella. And then the Observer and ObserverToday.com, uh, our local source for news in the Dunkirk and Northern Chautauqua County area and the Post Journal, uh, the uh, of course news source down here in uh, the Jamestown area. So thank you to those who sponsored today. And a couple quick Event updates as well upcoming. We have business after hours next Tuesday, week from today at Group Therapy in Lakewood. We're excited to kind of visit a new place. Hope you might join us there. That's free for all chamber members. Uh, two tickets to each member included right in your membership. So check our website out to register for that. And then another networking business after hours, June 9th at Cabana Sam's in Sunset Bay. So join us for a hopefully beautiful evening on Lake Erie. As I mentioned off the top, our panelists today are Lori Mee with Spectrum Reach and Chris Anderson with Snowcrest and the Resource Center. I'll certainly let them each introduce themselves and their company a little bit uh, before they jump into their um, jump into their presentation. And with that, if it's okay, Lori, I'll kick it right over to you. Sounds good. Thanks, Dan. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And thanks to the Chamber for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. Um, today, we're going to talk a little bit about the marketing funnel and the journey through it to help kind of explain where the customers are and the best ways to reach them. Um, again, I'm Lori Mee. I'm from Spectrum Reach. I've been with this company for many decades right here in uh, Jamestown, but I also work regionally around the Buffalo and Erie areas as well. And I help local businesses with whatever their need is, whether it's recruiting, um, new business, branding. Um, and I have great products to be able to reach their customers. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about Spectrum Reach and, and kind of who we are. Um, we bring products and solutions that make um, the evolving media world easy to navigate. Um, we're advertising experts and we're your one-stop shop for the best products and ideas to reach anyone, anywhere, on any screen. Um, that's because we're premium video experts. Um, our clients have access to advertise on thousands of hours of the best multimedia programming. And we offer TV across multiple cable providers and streaming services with direct access to network apps on every type of device. Um, and every day, tens of millions of viewership insights are aggregated and anonymized from 47 million devices um, to create the smartest advertising campaigns for our clients. These provide us actionable data and insights. Um, and this proprietary viewership data is combined with third-party demographics and consumer research to deliver actionable insights to businesses of any size. Um, we're 
your local neighbor. Like I said, I live and work right here in town, in this town, and we're also your local expert. So Dan, can you switch for me? And again, one more time, Dan. So the consumer journey um, is our marketing funnel and that's going to be um, where we start walking through. Dan, one more for me. We're going to start right at the very top with awareness. Consumers are gonna go through all the stages of the marketing funnel um, and there are just different ways to market to people in each and every stage. So the consumer journey, like I said, it starts with awareness um, and that's from a brick and mortar location in their neighborhood or maybe seeing advertisements just in their everyday walk of life. Awareness is about building a brand. Um, does the community that you want to serve know your business name? Here's a good way to kind of check that. So if you're say at a dinner party or one of our chamber networking events, and you're with new people, and you mention where you work. Do they know who your company is? Do they know what you do? Now, if the answer is no, then at this stage of the funnel, it looks like you need some focus on awareness and building your brand. Dan, would you switch? From the awareness phase, we move into interest. And in the interest, this is where um, this it comes from a need. So for example, I'm moving and the bank that I use isn't in the place that I'm going to. So now I have a need for a new bank. Um, when looking for a new bank, people may compare banks and credit unions, or they might, you know, look for information like searching tips for choosing a bank. Um, and they ask their network, you know, I think I need a new bank. Are you really happy with the one that you're using? What would you recommend? Um, and notice this, you wanna to talk to the audience at this stage, you wanna to speak to them where they are. This is information shopping here in the interest phase. This is not brand shopping, not yet. So from the interest phase, we move into consideration. And in consideration, um, if you've been successful to getting your name in front of this person and you've got to them to think enough of your name, you're going to be added to their consideration list. You know, perhaps they're considering they've narrowed down to two banks and two credit unions. And this is the stage where the consumer really begins to refine that list. Okay, this, um, this is the phase when a lot of the marketers um, get into the game, because at this point, the customer has already um, laid a lot of digital markers out there on their intent. So they've been searching things, they've been researching. And this is where, as they're moving closer to making that buying decision, they're starting to make their comparisons. And so, um, you know, more competition is getting in the game to try to reach them at this point. Dan, next. Am I on the right slide, Lori? Intent? Yeah, you sure are. One second for me, sorry. So, sorry about that. Our next phase is intent. Ideally, you've gotten the right message, like in front of the right shopper at this phase, and they've so, shown some interest in moving forward. So, here is where you're going to start to um, to use activities, or I'm sorry, they're going to start to see activities of convenience. So, um, they might search bank branches near me or um, you know, does Best Bank, for example, have a good mobile app or online banking with Best Bank? So they're really kind of narrowing it down and they're searching more with those brand names that they've uncovered and put into their consideration at this point. So where you could have a significant marketing effort and budget, your website, your mobile app and your social presence are really going to start doing the heavy lifting at this point. It's going to come down to heaps their message in front of the consumer as they make this decision. So they're moving from intent, then they move into evaluation. The evaluation phase is, is the part in the sales funnel where the consumers are going to make that final decision. Am I going to choose A or am I going to choose B? Um, so while they're making that purchasing decision, 
um, this, um, this phase of the sales cycle, it's really important to maintain your key contacts and then try your best to make this decision faster. So you've already you know, gotten your name in there, you've come down to the final selections, this is the final push for them to make that purchase. And as they move from that evaluation to making the purchase, they're going to complete the transaction and we've reached the bottom of our funnel. But this is where through successful purchase and transactions, um, we can move through surveys and referrals and continued engagement with this consumer as we wrap back around and we get back to the top of the funnel and we start again. So even though the funnel goes straight down, it always curves and comes right back up. So by finishing that purchase successfully, maintaining that contact through continued referrals and surveys and things, we then, like I said, encourage back to the top of the funnel and start moving down through again. Next one, Dan. So why is the marketing funnel important? Well, hopefully our walk through the journey has explained a little bit more about where people are at each stage and what's important to know um, that a smart, well-rounded marketing plan works at providing the best service uh, at every contact with your customer in that funnel. That's what's gonna ensure repeated success is you know, continuing the journey all the way through and following it through making sure you're reaching those potential customers at each and every point. Okay, Dan. And this is just a little bit about um, Spectrum and how we help those local businesses through TV and streaming. Um, we're the leading TV and internet service provider. And um, we built customer software to create the most effective digital and video campaigns for these customers. Um, we have our first party de-identified data and we utilize that. Um, we can provide geofencing to give you the opportunity to select specific areas and reach and serve ads only in those specific, specific areas. We also have a kernel creative team, which is our own in-house creative agency, and they do research and strategy development, along with video, audio, digital design, social media, production services, um, and then our addressable online search. Um, we have solutions to reach and engage our clients' ideal targets, and this allows us to help you at every stage of the marketing funnel. Dan, next. So we're here, Spectrum Reach is here to help you in your journey. I appreciate all of the time that you've taken today to be with us and um, excited to hear um, Chris follow up with us and show us the digital tools and things that will help us through this funnel. Um, please let me know if there's anything that I can help you with. And thank you for your time. Dan. Awesome. Thank you, Lori. Uh, very good uh, walk through the funnel there and uh, some of the intro stuff and then obviously how Spectrum um, Spectrum Reach can help folks through that. So with that, good segue over to Chris with Snowcrest Digital to uh, kind of take it from there on uh, some of the other avenues. Chris. Thank you very much, Dan. Um, and thank you, Lori, for that very informative presentation. Um, again, my name is Chris Anderson. Uh, I'm with uh, the Resource Center. I'm the marketing and internet manager there. And I also own a side business called Snowcrest Digital. A little bit about me. Um, I've been in the marketing field for over 20 years. And in that time, I've worked for various uh, profit and nonprofit organizations. Um, as I stated earlier, currently I'm the marketing internet manager for the Resource Center. And I also own a digital marketing business uh, that caters to nonprofits and small business orders called Snowcrest Digital. I also specialize in website development and digital marketing in both roles. So I'm gonna try to take a 30,000 foot view and provide more of an overview um, instead of specifics, but um, in digital marketing and today's competitive market, it's important to use every means possible to give yourself an advantage uh, your website is a great tool for reaching millions of people browsing the internet on a daily basis, looking for content, products, and services. 
Um, a lot of times when I tell people when I design a website for them, it's great, it's wonderful, you design a website, but you have to drive people to the website in order to increase your traffic. So that's where digital marketing come in, came, comes in. With an effective digital marketing, your chances of reaching many more people increases dramatically. Um, some of the digital marketing tools that uh, we offer and some of the tools that I use in my position at the Resource Center, uh, we do search engine optimization. Uh, that's the process of optimizing a website so it appears high on search results based on a set of keywords and key phrases. We do search engine advertising. It's also called pay-per-click management. Uh, that's usually through Google. It's a process of managing the placing of ads on search engines and optimizing those ads so clients get the best return on their investment. We also offer social media marketing, uh, which is the paid version of social media, where you can decide a budget and can micro-target the marketing based upon demographics, interest, and location. And then one of the, one of the great tools of digital marketing and one of the ones that has been around for a long time is email marketing. It's still the most effective form of digital marketing. And with automation on many of the programs that you can use, whether it be MailChimp, Constant Contact, AWeber, et cetera, um, your campaigns can pretty much run themselves. This allows more time to fine tune the campaign and check its progress. Next, I'll kind of segue into web design. Um, you know, a website is, is basically a window to the inside of your business, and it should promote the entity, impress the viewer, and increase the sharing of content. There are different types of websites and different ways to build them. Uh, two different kinds of websites are a static website. A static website has all its pages created already, and they are stored on a server and shown to the user when the user visits a page. Static websites normally do not use or require a database, but they can have one. And they are static, which means there's not a lot of interaction on the website. A dynamic website, uh, dynamic websites have content that change automatically based on user interaction and other factors. They all use a database or a content delivery network to provide the data. Dynamic websites provide functionality in various forms that users can use to perform a task or set of tasks. Many websites on the web today are dynamic. As I mentioned earlier, there's, there's different ways to build a website. Um, you can build it using a template. Many templates are open source and you can change the template to suit your project need. And they're mainly built using HTML code. Another type of website is a CMS, uh, which is a content management system. There are many content management systems available today. Uh, as many of you probably are aware, WordPress is the, is the most widely used and this is what we use at Snowcrest Digital and what we use to design our brand new resource center website. Drupal and Joomla are a couple of examples of some other CMS systems. Um, thirdly, there's a, what's called a website builder. Um, various companies have created website builders that allow our, allow our user to drag and drop elements on a page and then save the pages they created as a complete website. A lot of those are Wix, Squarespace, uh, Shopify, and Weebly. There are also a number of website formats uh, available. You have a single page, which is just one page and all the content is loaded on the page when you open the website. That's also known as a landing page. You have a business website format. It's a business or company website. And that's what we see most often and they represent a company or organization. We also have e-commerce websites, which are very prevalent on the internet. Uh, they're essentially online shops and you can buy anything online these days. Online shops are our advanced websites. And a web service, web services are websites that do not use a user interface or at least one that is not available to the general public. These websites provide data and functionality to other applications that do have a user interface like mobile apps and other websites. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Very good, thanks, Chris. Welcome. Um, Again, so uh, we'll kind of open it up for questions here. Uh, you know, feel free to send something in the chat if you'd like still, or, you know, just unmute and uh, ask. But um, I would uh, uh, first like, if it's okay to kind of ask Lori, uh, you, you talked at the end kind of about some of the different options that Spectrum Reach offers. If somebody were to want to, you know, discuss 
uh, working with Spectrum to produce, you know, a commercial or other content. Just what does that entry point look like? How does somebody do that? Oh, you're muted, Lori. There we go. Sorry about that. I think the best way to start that process is probably to get a hold of me and let's have a conversation. Um, we have so many options available for local businesses um, for at every entry point for them to be able to work with us. Um, and like I said, I am here locally in the Jamestown office and would love to talk to them. So I can sure, certainly share my contact information and they can reach out. Great. And so if somebody um, you know, might, might have different stages of their content, right? So, uh, obviously, you know, Spectrum can produce that commercial, like, will you air if they already have something like that? Or how does that? Sure. Work? There's a certainly, especially with, um, you know, different options available out there for video and digital banner creation, things like that. Um, long form, we, um, have, People can bring us completed videos or we can use photos or uh, video clips that they have along with us being able to go out and do a full on production with a crew where the script is, is created. We um, sometimes you know, utilize everything from makeup to talent to just depending on what that job is. So it can be done in many ways, um, but it's all pretty easy. Great, thanks. Chris, you spoke about, um, you know, in depth uh, on websites and kind of developing that web presence. And I, I had to, um, it, it was funny seeing the, the different stages or types of websites, right? And you mentioned, you know, like a landing page, which we certainly continue to see a lot, right? You know, if somebody just has a basic kind of contact info a lot, but can you speak to, you know, maybe which of those options might be a good sweet spot for a small business, if that makes sense, um, to, to, you know, make sure their website is effective, but also um, not a, a challenge to manage? Yeah, I mean, essentially, it's going to depend on what the intention um, is of the marketing. Um, you know, a lot of times people will use landing pages um, to drive their digital marketing to. Um, it just becomes a simple spot where someone can see some information and then contact someone ASAP or send something through a contact form. Uh, you know, again, a business or company website, depending on, you know, they can be any size. They can be five pages, they can be 10 pages, they can be 15 pages. Um, it just kind of depends on what the, uh, the company wants to market and what level of marketing they want to do. Can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead, Leslie. Hi, um, I'm wondering, this, um, this is probably a question for Chris, and it's a little general, so I know you're not going to have a specific answer, but assuming you set up a landing page on your, um, a good landing page on your website with a good call to action on there, um, and you want to run a pay-per-click campaign, maybe with a combination of a retargeting campaign along with that, my, I... Um, I'm just wondering about budget. Like what is maybe the minimum amount of money you would wanna to spend to get a successful click-through rate to get to your landing page? Because I think if you spend too little money, you're not gonna get, you're not gonna get any play for that. And I, I don't really have a concept of what is enough of a monthly budget to, to spend to get any movement on that. Thanks, thanks for the question, Leslie. Um, you know, it's, again, it's really gonna depend on what the intention is, but I, I mean, we do offer a number of different digital marketing packages. Um, and specifically, I mean, ours started like $250 a month. Um, obviously the more money you spend, the more chance you are to hit more people. So, you know, it's, it's that age old thing. You spend more money, you can make more money. Um, but essentially, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I would say the lower end for us at least is about $250 a month. Um, you know, and then if you're getting into like social media, Facebook targeted advertising, um, I like to do a minimum of like $10 a day as a minimum, but you know, it can go up to a hundred, five hundred thousand $500,000, you know, it just depends on what you're looking to do. Thanks. Okay. That's really, that's helpful. Thank you. Welcome. Great. 
the floor is open. If there's any anyone else. Lori, I wanted to ask you a question. Sure. <laughs> Go ahead, Chris. Do you, um, does Spectrum offer OTT? We most certainly do. Um, Spectrum TV um, and Spectrum Streaming TV um, is, is our OTT. Um, but we have not just, um, we're not just reaching our subscribers. We reach them on, um, on a wide platform. Um, so that's, yep, that's our. Wonderful. Okay. I have a question. Chris, can you talk a little bit about um, tracking data and the importance of, you know, watching where your consumers might be coming from to your website and things like that. I think that sometimes we get so caught up in how pretty a website looks or, you know, what, what are we, what are we selling there or what are we putting on there? What images do we use? But talk, talk a little bit about the data, if you could, on the back end. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like I said, like I said earlier, you know, you can design the greatest looking website in the world, but if nobody's coming to it, then, you know, it's the design does nothing if nobody's coming to it. So that's where, that's where digital marketing does come in. Um, and yeah, the data, the data portion of it is very important. Um, you know, one of the things that I use and I'm sure a lot of people use is Google analytics. Um, that really allows you to um, kind of look at different areas of your website, what pages are getting a good entry, what pages are getting a lot of um, page views. Uh, you know, I mean, I think essentially when you're, when, you're, when you're looking at data, there's all different types of data that you can look at uh, within analytics, which just makes it easy to really kind of target where you might want to spend more money on digital marketing. I hope that answers your question, Sheila. Yeah, great. I think along those lines too, and this may be part of what you were asking, Lori, uh, Chris, is the, um, you know, I know we've had conversations about the, uh, I'm not sure the correct term, but sort of like the portal that someone, you know, maybe advertising with Spectrum can log in and look at the, you know, where their ads are being placed. And I was really amazed to hear, and I'm sure it's the same, you know, as you're mentioning, Chris, whether it's social media or um, website, or again, you know, Spectrum, how targeted someone can make, you know, place their advertisements, right? I, I don't know if that's really phrased as a question, but, uh, you know, Lori, and then maybe Chris, if you could speak to that, because it, it really is amazing how you can uh, it, it's not like the old days, probably, so to speak, where you're just buying a time block, right? You can really target specific people with your advertising nowadays. Yeah, absolutely, Dan. And, and thank you for bringing that up because when I started doing this a very, very long time ago, I had four channels that I could place commercials on and they might run anywhere between 6 a.m. and midnight. And that was as targeted as I could get. Now, my geography went as far as my cable lines went. So that was also limited. The beauty now is, is we are so far advanced in that, that we are to the point where we have streaming addressability. What that means is we can now through our data, our first party data as, you know, the line into the home, um, television, internet, mobile phone. Um, we've gotten to the point now where I have a customer who can target 123 Main Street with a message um, because they know that they have a Chevy lease expiring in their garage in the next six months, specifically targeted to them. But the house across the street, they have a Ford. I can target that message to them. So we can be right in the same community and targeting it right to your home. And through that streaming, we can target them no matter what device they're using, um, whether they're on an app, if they're using um, the Spectrum TV app, or if they're, you know, on Hulu, Amazon Prime, any of those, um, we have the ability to target just directly to that home and specifically to that potential customer. Um, we identify them through the demographic targeting as well. Um, so we can get very specific and um, really spend the dollars efficiently. Um, that's also now, now the difference being we used to be able to extend to where our cable lines went. 
And now we can specifically target back the other way to just where you need. So we can uh, geographically target just Chautauqua County or just a certain zip code or even more. And like I said, 123 main and 124 main with a different message. Chris, any um, you know, thoughts around with the other digital options, you know, website, social media, you know, how critical that is to, to make sure you're adding those different sure. you know, categories? Yeah, I mean, further to uh, Lori's point, I mean, you know, within the last 15 to 20 years, we've just had so many more different options for people to use for, for marketing. Um, you know, I mean, you look back way back, you know, you use print ads, you use TV ads. Uh, but now, you know, you have social media marketing, you have digital marketing, um, you have text marketing, you have, you know, marketing on people's phones. That's, I mean, that's really the thing we try to target is, um, you know, people are carrying that phone in their hand all the time. And when they want to try to find information, that's where they go. You know, they don't generally go to their desktop computer or their iPad or whatever. They just pull that phone out of their pocket and they start searching. So some of the things we do are, are, are focused on that. Um, Furthermore, to social media marketing, you know, along the same line as Lori, we can, that can be micro-targeted. Uh, you know, you can do social media marketing that's micro-targeted to geographic region, um, micro-targeted to a certain age group, micro-targeted to uh, people's interest. Um, and then again, you can, you can spend $10 a day or you can spend $1,000 a day. So you just kind of name your price and, and what you're looking for. Great. Yeah, and I think, you know, back to the beginning of the presentation, uh, you know, when Lori was talking about the funnel, right, that all these different options figure into a, a different stage of the funnel, right, where um, you have, you know, maybe a more broad blanket approach for a specific stage, or you have, um, you know, these more specific options, the further down the funnel someone gets. Um, any other questions from the gallery? All right. Well, uh, I look for it on my screen. I don't know if I am on yours too, but uh, uh, with that, uh, you know, if anybody does have any follow-up questions, please feel free to send them over. You know, we'd be happy to try to help facilitate that conversation. I do want to point out a few folks from our chamber team that you may know, uh, but I want to make sure you know. So uh, Sheila Webster, our Director of Marketing Communications. Thank you, Sheila. Becky Vody was with us earlier. She's our Director of Member Services. She's always out and about. And Carrie Swanson, who is our Office Administrator and Jamestown Area Coordinator. So, uh, you know, please, anytime, don't hesitate to reach out. I also wanted to mention, and we'll follow up maybe with an email, uh, the chamber, as part of some other efforts we've been working on, sort of curated a list of local, um, you know, companies and individuals who kind of work in the marketing space. And I think it's a great resource for everyone to have, um, whether you're looking again for services on the creative side, like graphic design or other items like that, all the way up to when you're ready to, you know, maybe buy some advertising all of the different media companies and advertisers that uh, you may want to consider. So we have a really good PDF and we'll share that out uh, uh, so that you have that as a resource in the future. Um, I just, again, want to thank uh, real quick Lori and Chris for presenting today. We very much appreciate your time and expertise for sharing with everyone. Uh, thanks again to uh, the sponsors for today's session, Forcon, Labella, Observer, and Post Journal. And I will put one last call. Any last minute questions before we close? All right. Very good. Well, we'll let everybody get back to work. Happy Tuesday and hope you have a great week. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.